So, starting to plan this, and I need to get some key dimensions in order to go further, which is the distance from the props to the actual end of the boat, according to the plan. The distance here is just an arbitrary distance, because what I then want to do is measure the distance there, which is 90, and then measure the distance that I have drawn onto the plane, which is 55. Now that gives me the actual dimensions that I need in order to develop up the, um, the shafts. So I've got a piece of brass and I'm going to use this as the centerpiece of the system. I'm going to have to cut right into the tail in order to slide this into place. But the notion will be, uh, this will be where, where it all um, hangs off. And I'm going to have to make this um, quite um, quite soundly. So I've got some timber here, and I'm just I've I've set it all up, clamped it onto the bench, and I've got the, the little winglets that go on the outside. Um, that should all be that should all be quite fine. And now I've set it up with the tube itself, the four mil tube. No, it's bigger than four. And um, I'm now ready to. Uh, solder this. I spent a lot of time setting this up with nails and bits of packing and what have you to get it to the point that I've now soldered it. Now that is securely in place and it's perfectly uh, uh, mirrors the, the dimensions that I require. So I'm very happy with that and I can now start to play. What I have to do is cut this into the stern of the hull. There's no simple way of doing this. I'm going to have to, I'm starting as you can see with the drill, just to begin to drill the holes. Um, and what I do now is the usual routine. And if you've not seen me do this, it's worthwhile. I've got an entire pack of drills and I do them one after the other. And then I had to cut a slot horizontally so that this thing would begin to uh, fit in. You can see I've been, it must be a warm day here. I didn't notice I was sweating so badly, but anyway, there you go. So that will now slot into the stern of the hull. I've cut that fairly uh, deeply, as you can see, and the reason, I'm not worried, because I'm going to fill it all with filler and fiberglass and everything, it will be as strong as, as you like once it's finished. But that roughly now should, be an, uh, should enable me to uh, set this up so that it's in the right position uh, in terms of it, how it comes out of the boat horizontally, longitudinally, and everything. So this is the time when you literally have to spend some time. And I've cleared a spot on this bench so that I can get down in front of it, make sure that the boat is properly upright, and I can then um, look at the stern and make sure that those props are actually uh, perfectly right. So. Um, what I'm doing here is just making sure that the shafts are even in, in terms of um, their, ver their vertical, um, I say from the bottom of the boat, making sure that that's all, that's all nice and even and that they're actually at exactly the right place where they should be in accordance with the plans, which I think was 55 mil at that point. And now there's a bit of play that you can see in that plate arrangement that I've soldered together, which is great because it gives me now a chance to pack that and start to get it so that it's it's perfectly right. And the only way to do that, I've got to say, is by eye. You've got to get your eye on it, look at it, think is that right or is it not? And, and this is the point where a little bit of packing is clearly um, required, making sure that it's right at the front. Um, making sure it's right at the stern. There's no way of shortcutting this process. You, you've got to make sure that you've done it right. And the thing is, having some play is okay, but, but it needs to be right when I glue it, when I tack it in. So here's a bit of packing under there. I think one of the things I like about scratch building is at points like this things look rough and ready but in fact you're getting things as close to dead right as you can and it's a, it's a, it's a very um, fulfilling process. Oh, wow. 
So I'm spending a fair bit of time playing with this. Now, of course, there's no substitute for um, uh, checking the dimensions. <laughs> everything's okay, everything's fine. And that's uh, what it's looking like at the moment. But that is, I believe, pretty much spot on. Interesting stuff now. We're going to start thinking about how to put the end cap into the back of the boat. And I want to know how far back can I put this end cap so that it will fit uh, the prop shafts and fit the housings that are going to go around them. So let's think about that for a minute because uh, clearly, there we are, clearly the problem that we've got is that that's the end of the boat and the prop shafts are coming in at an angle. Now, if I were to put the end cap here, for example, it, it would actually be biting into the uh, groove for the O-ring. It's just not going to work. So we've got to think this through fairly carefully. So the question is, how much space do I need around the prop shaft? Now, the prop shaft is 5 mil. Um, I think what I need is a housing to build around that which is going to be at least 15 mil thick. This is just an estimation. Maybe 20 would be better, but I'll make 15 because what I want to do at the end of it is put a seal. And I also want at this end to have some clearance. It's going to look a bit like that. Anyway, so that's basically how the high housing is going to look. It's got about 15 mil. So the question is, how much clearance do we have on here? So the inside diameter, or where my fingers are here, uh, is the inside diameter of the uh, watertight cylinder, which is 94 millimeters. Now, I also have basically a five millimeter groove. So if I've got a five millimeter groove, there, I want at least five millimeters clearance. Otherwise, it's going to be a mess. So, if I'm going to have five millimeters clearance, let's work that out. From the center of the prop shaft, I'm going to need seven and a half, basically, twelve and a half. We'll, we'll call that five as well. That's the five millimeters and the clearance. We're going to need um, 17.5 millimeters to clear the, um, the groove and to, to get everything in. 17 and a half. So what that means is there's the um, end cap. 17 and a half, 17 and a half. The total of this is 94. Let's put that up there, 94. Uh, 17 and a half times 17 and a half, uh, 35. So what I've left with is 59 millimeters. That's what I've got to play with, 59. So let's have a look at the shafts. And the shafts, actually I've got it first time here, 59 is there. So that's where the end cap is going to have to be, which is right there. And I've got a lot of space in here. Mm. But that actually lines up with the groove. So the actual end of the end cap is going to be here. Okay, I've got several lines on here now, but I know that that's the one. Now this end cap is going to have to be, I'll have to grind that 3mm material away so it's going to slot in. So that's what I'm going to do to start with. Alright, I've put the, um, the watertight cylinder on there um, because it's going to assist. I just need to make sure that the clearance is going to be there for everything. Now it's sitting in place, and what I'm doing now is marking on the end cap 
where the holes are going to have to be to allow these prop shafts in. Now the holes are going to be a lot bigger than this in the end because there's actually going to be a housing sitting out of there but this is the starting point and if you start small you can always shift it and change it as you go. So that's my little method there for centering a hole, <laughs> just doing that by eye. Seems to work all right. You sort of get a, a reasonable idea. As I say, this isn't um, this this isn't science. This bit this is just about getting it sort of right and and um, getting the hole in the right place. And then I'll be I've, I'll be drilling them with a with a hand. I've actually adjusted again. I want a bit of space, as you can see, under the under the watertight cylinder because I'm going to run lead under there and some wires so I've drilled them now as you can see I just got the hand drill and put it in and it actually isn't that bad I'm quite I'm very pleasantly surprised that the first time round it's it's actually okay it's holding that's all I need at this point